Catholic bishop calls on ban of abortion supporting politicians receiving communion. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to cleverly call this, I'm such a clever human being, don't you know? I'm going to cleverly call this video Catholic bishops call for abortion supporting Pelosi Biden to be refused communion. And the Catholic Church communion, the, the, the key word phrase we're going for is Catholic Church communion abortion Democrat politicians Biden Pelosi. Yeah, that's the key phrase. <laughs> no more communion for Pelosi, I guess, is the, the simplest way that we can say this. So the Catholic leaders calling for an end of abortion supporting Biden and Pelosi getting communion. That's the brief. That's right. That's another brief. This was our second most popular story, actually. No, second or third, because I, I think I talked about earlier in the show the plane crash yesterday was either, that might have been second, and this is third most popular. Catholic uh, leaders. Well, it seems the Catholics have had enough of the unborn child murderers and supporters. Another top Catholic bishop has come out and demanded an end to allowing these politicians that support the murder of the unborn to stop receiving communion. In other words, he is telling them to literally go to H-E double hockey sticks. For, the Catholic, for in the Catholic belief, if you don't or can't receive communion, you might as well be excommunicated, meaning unless you reconcile with the church, your destination is, is, is the fire below. And this is from ChristianHeadlines.com. Archbishop of San Francisco issues scathing rebuke of pro-choice Catholic politicians. Archbishop of San Francisco, I already read that. Catholic politician, or the Archbishop in San Francisco is calling the Catholic Church to deny prominent pro-abortions or uh, pro-abortion Catholics communion. At least you're saying prominent and they're not trying to turn it into this witch hunt and trying to figure out are you do you support abortion? Do you don't support abortion? But when it's pretty obvious and open and you're making a career based upon your support for abortion, I think that's what he's talking about here. So on Saturday a pastoral letter titled Before I Formed You in the Womb I Knew You was issued. Let me, let me go. I'm going to read a little bit more of this one. There's a picture of old Pelosi. She's the one that won't be able to get communion if this works out. Prominent figures. Okay, a pastoral letter to you. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you was issued by San Francisco Archbishop Salvatore Cordione. I think that's how you say that. Cordi Cord Cordiglione. Cordiglione. In which he called on the Catholic Church to bar members who erroneously and sometimes stubbornly promote abortion. Prominent figures in society helped to shape the mores of that society. And in our culture, their advocacy of abortion definitely leads others to do evil, Cord Cordiglione wrote. This must be stated with clarity. Anyone who actively works to promote abortion shares some of the guilt for the abortions performed because of their actions. And while Nancy Pelosi, who is pro-abortion and represents San Francisco in Congress, is not mentioned by name, the Archbishop's words would apply to her and President Joe Biden. Both are Catholic pro-choice politicians. And I think this is more triggered by Joe Biden now being the president. So when you have the president of the United States, which is a representing himself as a Christian, in this case a Catholic, and he is proclaiming that, that, that abortion is good, well, I mean, he's not saying abortion is good. He's saying choice is good, but really that's saying abortion is good. Well, then, yeah, I think the Catholic Church has uh, has to reconcile itself to figure out what they're going to do with, with folks like that who are, what by their standards, clearly, clearly outside of the orthodoxy of the Catholic Church. They're in apostasy, as they say. Because we are dealing with public figures and public examples of cooperation and moral evil, this correction can also take the public form of exclusion from the reception of Holy Communion. Cordiglione said, and I know abortion is uh, it's a complex issue and uh, we should look at it with some degree of nuance and sophistication, as they say. And within the civic, there should be some maybe I don't know. I don't I don't want to speak so much to the civic as much as uh, within the, the confines of, of my Christian faith and the Catholic and their Christian faith that uh, abortion is the fundamental. Well, it's the fundamental example of how people who have take advantage of those who have not. This is where the most, the most vulnerable, the most disenfranchised in our society is the unborn. The human beings that are yet forming. And, and we have to create 
It's kind of like what had to happen with slavery in order for slavery to be justified in America because of our faith, because of we were predominantly a Christian nation. And I don't mean theologically like we're a theocracy, but in terms of most human beings identified as Christian and were, were, I think they were falling far closer to an authentic Christian faith than we are today, uh, even amongst those of us that claim to be Christians, that uh, they... They had the Christian faith, and they also had the Bill of Rights. They had the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, this fundamental understanding that all human beings are made in God's image, and therefore we have to treat human beings as we treat ourselves, with equality and justice, no social. We don't need the word social. Social is a horrible word to put in front of justice. That's a whole other story. Uh, but what we did was we invented these terminologies and conditions that would subhumanize the, the whole black quote-unquote race so that we could feel we could still live within our christianity and our bill of rights while we were yet advocating for the murdering and slaughtering and wholesale enslavement of a whole human being group that is no more or less than any other whole human being group and this is essentially what we're doing with abortion because we have we still have fundamentally we have a lot of uh, we're still fundamentally christian I, I put that in quotes uh, and and we still fundamentally believe in the bill of rights and i put that in quotes so what do you do you basically create terms and conditions in which you subhumanize the unborn it's ungodly and it's also on bill of rights you do not punish one human being for the sins of others and this is what abortionists abortion justifiers use they say well what in, what about the case of uh, rape well the child didn't rape you uh, what about the you're, you're going to to tell a woman that she has to give birth to a child? Yeah, yeah, because not giving birth to a child means the child is dead. If your action is going to take the life of another human being, there's no justification for that unless that human being was trying to kill you. And that child is not trying to kill you. When we're talking about issues that have to do with with real health care issues where a woman could die by giving birth well that's a, that's that's the only area where where there's some 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 space for for us to have a conversation but outside of that no christian should in their right mind support abortion in any way shape or form and no government that supports abortion is right in the eyes of the lord because you are fundamentally you are you're you're killing the sojourner because these unborn children are in a, in a manner of speaking they're, they're sojourners coming into the land uh, you're killing the sojourner you're killing the poor and the needy because there's nobody more poor and more needy than an unborn child so there's no justification for abortion so i applaud the catholic church and and i hope that uh, everyone uh, in the catholic church and all the other churches uh, get on board with this whole notion <laughs>